residents at a deeply discounted rate. Wow. Below what they currently pay. We've had some very difficult negotiations in this contract in past history, but in the last several rounds, we've settled on an agreement that all three boards have agreed to multiple times to base the increase on the maximum tax rate under the tax cap that their residents would pay if they were operating a library. So, you know, it's, it, it may not be ideal from the point of view of asking Kenilworth residents to pay as much as they could possibly be asked, but this is the best we're ever going to get. And we benefit from the additional revenue in providing services to Wilmette residents as well as to Kenilworth residents. So there's no advantage to us to attempt to push Kenilworth residents to pay more than what this contract already provides because the chances of their winning such a referendum are zero and none. <laughs> But I think, Trustee Johnson, I don't know, just to clarify, maybe, I think you were just trying to make the point as, if, is it kind of unfairly <clears throat> giving unincorporated Wilmette residents, you know, a little bit higher of a tax burden, if you will, or, you know, payment burden yeah. than it would be. I mean, but earlier it but was it said. it may not be important because. Excuse me, it's yeah. just the reason that we pass that rate is so that we can use our patrons and other patrons you got the interlibrary loan and so that allows that to happen and that's for legal reasons no for so i think what he was saying was that unincorporated wilmet residents there are no unincorporated are there? yes there are there are but they don't pay well there are none who are pay, paying pay for, cards, for cards but there are unincorporated wilmet residences who could be asked to make those payments None of them choose to at this point. But yes, there are people who fall under those provisions. There's particularly a portion of New Trier Township that is in our library district, it's in the Avoca School District, but it's not within, it's outside our library district, but, it's, but it is within the boundaries of Wilmette. There's also a small portion um, by Loyola, right? I feel like, or is that the one? Is that the well? This is area. it's the same area. Indian Hills, or by the golf course. Yeah, that's a yes, up in the up in the section. You know, I mean, there there are there are a couple of small areas. One of the challenges that the legislature has tried a couple of times to address the issue of unincorporated areas with respect to library service. Yeah. Um, it's a complicated issue. It primarily hits large rural downstate areas. It's not been a problem for which a solution has been found. It's been, you know, it's it's been defeated by the downstate uh, uh, areas that didn't want to be taxed for library services when they are a great distance from any near from the nearest library. But all in all, it's not as though we have a, a, a facility in Kenilworth or anything like that. So we're not spending any more money. They come to us. We exactly. are not going to them. We're, we're providing any services for them. So it's, we're not it's providing extra services extra just services. for them. Right, right. They're ac they have access to all the services Got we it. provide anyway. Right. We're here, and they come to us. The exactly. 2,500 residents. Right. So to speak. So it's almost a mute. Yeah. I mean, point. it's and we and they they do pay an administration fee, and then they pay based on the usage too for right. that. Mm -hmm. So. And it's but they pay How through their tax bill. How is by usage? Do they have a different card? Then? Uh, or the, does it just, it's all synced by, if you use it, your the systems can card. measure. So measure. Where, the systems can measure okay. whether or not someone's... It's smart it, enough. Yeah. Yes, yes. No, but, but there is right. just so, you know, you're asking a good question, Joan, because the other thing, is, since I've been kind of quasi, as a board member also, you know, being present for some of the Kenilworth board meetings, one of the things we're talking about is at some point with changing technology, the Kenilworth 
library card can designate somebody as either being a you know primarily a Wilmet user or a, um, a, Wil a Winneka user, user, and oh, then we'd okay. be able to track very specifically. Right now, we're doing a, a, a best guesstimate, but it's a pretty it's based on unreliable data, but it's not perfect. Um, but like Anthony said, it's about sixty percent for Wilmet and forty percent that use uh, the, out of Kenilworth that use the Winneka. Um, to library building system. Um, one other question. So if someone were an unincorporated will met and decide to break the rule and go from zero and be the one person that, that gets a library card, what would it cost them for a year to do so? Their tax bill times the library tax rate. So it's, so it's, so it's a floating number based on what their tax bill is. It's not going right. to okay. Just like it is for any like Sure, that. exactly. Right, right, right. I just want to, okay. So it's not, I didn't know if it was a flat fee or a, uh, okay. Because again, if I'm, I'm looking at this, it's still, I mean, each, each Kenilworth resident is paying to the to either Winneka or Kenilworth, you know, above a thousand dollars a year for the service based on what we're what we're charging them. Mm -hmm. So it's not. I don't think it's that high. It's, well, it's just two hundred eighty-two thousand dollars a year is what we're getting from Kenilworth between Winneka and and Wilmette. Mm -hmm. So, and if there's two thousand residents, then if you do the math, it's roughly you know it's roughly it's, it's a little less than missing something equation-wise. Well. I don't think that the arithmetic is that clean, okay. but the bottom line is yeah. they are paying a library district tax, Yes, and that library district then pays the two libraries that provide service to their residents. Right. And this is the best contract we've been able to negotiate over all of these years to satisfy the interests of all three library districts. Right, and my point is, it seems like it is a—it's a fair amount that that it's—it's it's not like Wilmet residents are being cheated or kind of—it's you know, it's a very fair amount that Kenilworth is paying mm -hmm. to be part of the Wilmet or Winnetka system. I would agree. Yeah, so that's yeah. That so that's, sounds. I was yeah. kind of doing the arithmetic. It's the math, in my exactly. Yeah, head yeah. And, you know, if you kind of split it 60-40, yeah. it sounds. It sounds actually like quite a lot, actually, especially if they're not if you're not using it, you know. Well, there's no, there are no services in this library building or in Winnetka Northfield. They're flagged exclusively for Kenilworth no, residents. of course, and I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody argues that. Right. I, right. It sounds like we're giving an equal amount of services right. to. Right. And they, we, yeah. they get extended invitations to, to our events, just like our patrons do. And also, I think one of the things is in terms of the board for the training that we're going to have. Mm -hmm. Anthony's going to invite their board to be part of that. So, because it's, it's a win win, I think, for us because. Absolutely, and for them. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Are there any more questions? I have no questions. Okay. Is there a motion? Can we have a motion? Did Dan have any more questions? I thank you. Um, I think, uh, as a process matter, and I'm sure, given your institutional history, Ron, and it sounds like you were personally involved in this, that. Uh, this was the best solution that could be found getting tax cap issues. I totally believe and understand that. I do think process-wise, it's not ideal for us to sort of be presented with this for a four-year contract, you know, a couple of days before the board meeting. And I think it is a, it's an important relationship, and it's one that I think we have some opportunities to try to innovate on, particularly because that Kenilworth Metro Station as you probably know, they don't serve anybody anymore. There's no ticket agent. And I think there's an opportunity for us to explore something innovative and in getting some more services over to Kenilworth, perhaps with that facility. But um, I do think, and I hope, we can take this opportunity to revisit this conversation if there's a legislative fix that's perhaps something we ought to pursue, because on its face, you know, folks in Winnetka or folks in Wilmette, uh, we all ought to be, be paying largely around the same tax rate for the same services. The, you know, it's closer for people in Kenilworth to get to our facility than people in West Wilmette. As a general principle, I think that's the way we ought to go. I appreciate the limitations of state law. I can appreciate your personal history, Ron, that this is the best we can do. But I hope we'll be able to, over the coming months and years, see if we can do something that gets closer to everybody paying about the same rate. But and I hope voting for this contract doesn't preclude that conversation for the next four years. The question, if it's closer for them than West Will Met to get here, why would the Kenilworth Metro Station even come up? Given No, look, putting that aside, I just mean in general, I think... We ought to be going towards a uh, 
a rate where everybody pays about the same. And I hope we can have that conversation and that uh, supporting this particular contract does not preclude that conversation or other innovative things we can come up with over the next four years, particularly well, given this is sort of our first chance to talk about it. Well, Please. this that would require changes in legislation. It would not just be what we chose to do. Right. There are three parties to this contract, three library districts that are part of this contract, and the unifying element is that we have to operate under the Library District Act. All of us do. And the other statutes that, that apply to setting these tax rates. And so, you know, it's not a decision that, that even if the three boards agreed, it's not a decision that we could make by ourselves. It would require legislative action. And I don't know that anyone is currently proposing that, uh, that kind of a change. And I frankly don't know what interest would drive that type of a proposal. But, you know, it's certainly something that we can further discuss. Anything that we would be wanting to do with respect to the metro station would be totally outside the boundaries of this contract anyway. If we want to provide additional services or negotiate uh, the placement of a drop box or any other details of extending our service, this contract doesn't affect that. We can do those things by negotiating with the appropriate organizations where we would want to provide those services. And the library district would be a party to the discussion but they wouldn't have veto authority over it because that's not something that, I mean, we, we manage their library services for them. Yeah. So it's not a, you know, it's a question that would be discussed with them, but it's not something that, you know, that would be dependent on this contract for it to be approved. This contract only covers the distribution of their tax monies and the payment of an administrative fee. What happens beyond that is is totally open to the three boards. And were you were you trying to give me a softball and legislative change since I'm calling you from Springfield? No. <laughs> Just the facts. Just the facts. Just the facts, ma'am. Yeah. I've been at this a long time, and I've worked with a lot of legis of con of clients dependent on legislative changes, and that's a very slow moving dinosaur. All right. Thank you, Ron. Okay. Thank I move you. approval of the Kenilworth Services Agreement with uh, Kenilworth and the Winneka Northfield Library Districts. Second. Roll call. Okay. Trustee Riddle. Aye. Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee Wolf. Aye. Trustee McDonald. Aye. Trustee Barshes. Yes. Trustee Fishman. Yes. And then right. And Trustee Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> Johnson. So do that. Yeah, you, you talk me into it, Ron, especially since we can keep talking with the board, see if we can get to a more equitable uh, distribution. So I'll vote yes. There are also other related issues, though, too. Again, as a liaison to Kenilworth again and the Kenilworth board, you know, if, if we try to raise more money, we may, we, they may decide not to, they might decide to end the relationship. Just go to and then if we lose the science. income, we'd have to discuss how that income loss would affect, we, we, that would be a hit to the Wilmette operating um, financial operations. So that's something else to think about. So you, it's not, it's not a, it, like Ron said, it's already complicated, but there's the additional concerns that I know people, residents of Kenilworth have, that they already feel they're paying as much as they feel is quote unquote fair. Um, and they don't have a building, and they do also sometimes question whether or not they should be having a board that is representative in a community that doesn't have a building. So you're, you're, you're kind of opening up. There are all kinds of further potential cans of worms that open that ultimately might lead to, again, um, the loss of the relationship with Kenilworth, which could, again, lead to lots of other uh, potentially negative consequences for, for the Wilmette Library. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, all of the trustees received uh, an email with the facts regarding the patron suspension. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to first open up with W. Wilmette Public Library's patron behavior policy number 10 opens with 
The Library of Trustees' goal is to provide a quiet, pleasant environment conducive to study, as well as casual use, and to enhance the library's image as a welcoming, useful place. Our service standards include our goal to provide a friendly, welcome environment to everyone. A, strate a strategic plan includes goals to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion in all aspects of the library. The patron in question has been reprimanded and uh, has uh, caused incidents and discomfort through basically anti-Semitic slurs, uh, loud rants, and just disturbing the mood of the library. The patron has done it, been reprimanded four different times, and the last time, uh, Director Anthony Austin, uh, in conjunction with the police walking him out, uh, banned him. At this time, uh, we are recommend, uh, Anthony recommended that uh, the patron be banned for six months. Some of the trustees have felt that based on previous incidents and past, uh, that he'd be banned for, the patron be banned for a year. We'd like to do a straw vote then have a discussion about it because of patient, patient, uh, patron confidentiality. So just six months versus 12, and then we'll ask for 